Hi, my name is Bob Caswell, and I wanted to ask Sam about sexism and feminism. Mm. I, I don't want to get you in trouble, but I kind of do. Oh, you sort of do, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is better you than me. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, standard disclaimers, I'm a white dude asking three white dudes. Um, but I, I'm interested in the solution. Right now, we're in a moment of outrage, which I think is well justified. But what should we do as right. humans to move forward? Right. Well, let me, let me just say I, I'm planning to tackle this on my podcast with a woman, uh, or actually a series of women, so I, it, it will be uh, something I, I talk about. And, uh, you know, for, for better or for worse, I mean, it is something... I, mean, I, I can say my, my default setting, I'm very secure in my default setting here because I do see this just by, by bias, frankly, from the perspective of a woman. I mean, when, I, when we talk about you know, sexual harassment and, you know, elevator gate or any of these moments where, you know, a woman says she f was made to feel uncomfortable by a man. You know, I was raised by a single mom. You know, I've got two daughters. I view all my self-defense thinking about violence, privileges, the fact that women are walking around in, in this world outweighed by men virtually all the time. You know, so my default setting is to trust the woman's account in all of these things. And I feel like men have a moral obligation not to be creeps. And, and I, I, again, I see this, this uh, um, you know, I, I think in this case, through, just through sheer good luck from the perspective of a, you know, a little boy who was raised by a, a mother without a father in the house. So I get it. And yet I also get that I'm, as being a guy, uh, I'm capable of not getting it, right? So I, I want to put myself in conversation with, with a, with a few smart women journalists who can walk me through this, and I'm a, I'll just table it for that podcast. Sounds good. Okay. Greetings again. Now, as can be evidence from that bit uh, by Sam Harris from an open stage waking up podcast, you can see that his uh, views on certain things can be pretty lopsided. And to be fair, I've chosen his his weak spot really when it comes to matters of sex differences and how they have an effect on society, he is completely out to lunch and, as you could hear, very, very biased. But the reason why I, I decided to cite that uh, and to talk about this specifically is something that I've been thinking about for quite some time, which is to say there is a degree of openness in public discourse for people like Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris and uh, various other pundits who talk about issues that are regarded as, in the public sphere at least, mildly controversial. But if you actually look at the evidence behind certain things, and let's look at the evidence of this, that whatever your thoughts on the Weinstone affair and, and all the derivative cases uh, or related cases, women aren't in a, a terrible state of plight or suffering in Western society or American society. In fact, as we know, men are uh, much worse off be it uh, young men's suicide rates, uh, educational uh, disadvantages, divorce, etc. I mean, the list is fairly endless. Workplace-related death. Is he even aware of this stuff? No, he's, he's going to find a female journalist to talk about whether or not they, women find certain men creepy. This is lowbrow. And moreover, it's obfuscation and it's a deflection of an actual issue that could be addressed, uh, but he's not going to do it for obvious reasons. And so we have many of these pundits who will rant on about certain things, and increasingly I get the sense that there's not much hope to get some of the discussions we have in uh, more eclectic spheres and more limited spheres, such as the YouTube sphere or the Internet in general, Discord, etc., into the public sphere, that major sphere that Sam Harris occupies and Jordan Peterson uh, without those types of people being unwilling to address certain issues. Uh, Peterson in recent times has really, I mean, shown he'll, he'll just decline to answer questions because he knows it will ruin his reputation. Now, what is the solution to this? And I've been thinking about this for a while. Well, it can't be what already exists in the form of random people, random unremarkable people, such as myself, and I am a random unremarkable person, talking about issues that I think are 
uh, more substantive or penetrative society. It needs to be something more than that. And we actually have a model for this, believe it or not. The model is, in effect, the Kickstarter or crowdfunding model. <clears throat> now, there are many people, obviously, who uh, might take issue with this because if you look at gaming, there have been a lot of Kickstarter projects or crowdfunding projects that simply didn't work out. And so then you're led to believe, well, it's, it's not going to work. But others have worked out. But very specifically, when I talk about crowdfunding, I am sure that there are actual credentialed, qualified scientists out there who are afraid to speak their minds, not because they want to be uh, particularly incendiary or particularly abrasive, but they're interested in certain topics that might have relevance to human civilization, society, and, and health and biology, uh, but they, they do not feel that they're at liberty to, to speak on these matters or to research these matters. There was the Bruce Lawn uh, issue that came back came up uh, 13 years ago, University of Chicago, where he was basically said you shouldn't be talking about this stuff because you know racism, etc. And there are plenty of other issues. This one example. But what if we, the unremarkable public, could get behind some of these scientists if they were willing to come out of the closet and say, look. There's a line of research I want to pursue. It, it's important and relevant because of X, but I need to make public appeals for research funding, and I need the approval of the politically correct uh, powers that be in order to engage in this research. And at the current moment, I can't do that because of these limitations. And they say to us, the unremarkable public, what if... What if you were willing to uh, fund some of these projects? Now, of course, you can go on and do your own thing. I remember last year I had the young gentleman, the, the Danish IQ researcher, I know I'm mispronouncing his name, Søren Kierkegaard, I believe his name is said uh, appropriately in Danish, who does his own research. But then there, there, there are types of research and, and things within research that, that require uh, more money than merely looking things up. Um, for example, uh, this isn't uh, terror. This isn't one of these issues or these core issues. I, I, well, it is a core issue, but it's not a, a controversial issue. The issue of um, engaging in experimentation on mice and, and seeing how uh, caloric deficits affect metabolism, longevity, cognition, etc. Um, that requires a little bit more than just kind of looking things up online or, or doing research or ordering books. Um, that's all well and good, and all of us unremarkable people, we can do that. But if you need, if you need just physical resources to do certain things, then um, you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. If you're the type of scientist who's going to be uh, researching these things and, and talking about these things, um, I remember way, way back in the day um, when CS was still around and alive on YouTube, and he. Uh, was attempting to contact uh, neuroscientists who specialize in sex differences in the brain. And he contacted at least two dozen, maybe even three dozen of them. And, you know, none of them wanted to talk about the research, even though the focus of their research was quite literally, to a T, the differences between male and sex, uh, female uh, uh, brains and how they operate and what have you, cognition. It's pretty obvious why. If these people were not under the public dime or penny or whatever, and they had liberty uh, through crowdfunding, I think uh, they'd be more willing to talk about these things. What I've seen on the internet for the past five, six, maybe seven years is a burgeoning, a, a bubble, if you will, of people who are thirsty for knowledge but, but lack the credentials, the capacity, or whatever, to really put it out there in a way that reaches uh, many, many people. And then if you look to the pundits and intelligentsia of our time, uh, the, the Richard Dawkins, the uh, Sam Harris's, the Jordan Petersons, they're not willing to touch certain things with a 10-foot pole for obvious reasons. Now, Sam Harris did do this a little bit in his talk with Charles Murray, but still asked really public, uh, puzzling questions, and yet 
when it comes to this matter, uh, Weinstone affair, I don't, I, does he not have eyes to look around the world to see that women have it pretty damn good? Well, this is example, a perfect example of, the, of this type of failure of the public intelligentsia, and yet many people are funding them. Uh, people like Sam Harris, Waking Up Podcast. At times, I wanted to donate, but I, feel so, I have such mixed feelings about Sam Harris that it's very difficult to do so. Um, and he, he just seems to, I hate to use the term, cuck on so many issues that are, that are integral to understanding society. And dovetailing with my previous video about not operating off of pure abstraction, it's time to talk about the devils uh, being in the details. Uh, and we can't do that with, with a, a public platform that is uh, averse to discussing issues that, that might make people shy away or, or uncomfortable. The time of comfort is, is over, uh, it, it, or ideally it should be. We're well past that moment. And in the shadows, many people are discussing things. I think, and I don't know how I would go about this since I'm an unremarkable nobody, that if there were scientists interested in human biodiversity, sex, racial, ethnic differences, etc., who believe that these differences may have an important impact on society and could even, maybe, I'm not saying they absolutely do or must have, might have policy implications, uh, that such individuals come forth and make an appeal to interested, unremarkable public people such as ourselves in an effort uh, that they might be uh, funded appropriately uh, so as to not rouse the ire of the powers that be that and the, uh, the thought uh, patrol and those who seek to control thought and speech. Because right now, uh, I really, really feel like we're at an impasse. That, you know, I have videos planned about various topics related to this in the coming weeks and months, but I'm a nobody. I'm also not qualified in, in a credentialed sense. So my reach is limited. I have about 35,000 subscribers. Uh, and even, as I said, the bigger YouTubers don't want to talk about this stuff. A la Sargon, etc. So, I, I just don't know of any other option I can think of that would allow us to move forward. Remember that uh, so in the, the IQ researcher, we talked about the sort of intellectual outpost. Well, such an outpost, if we want to say it's analogous to this idea of crowdfunding, would have to be crowdfunded. Uh, other or elsewise supported and funded by specifically rich individuals who usually have a very uh, specific agenda. They have a reason for doing so. The people are just interested in the science and they're scientists who want to pursue certain subjects that are denied to them uh, because of their chains and shackle, uh, the fact that they're shackled to, to the public dime. Well, this might be a way forward. I can't really think of any other way forward for, for actual qualified scientists to do work that is unnecessarily considered controversial in order to get the information out there. Because <clears throat> ultimately, at some point in time, we need to have that critical, fundamental discussion about HBD in the wider sense. I'm not just talking about ethnic, racial differences, but also sex differences, because they are impactful and they do have, they would have to have some implications for society. Whether we choose to do something with that is a, is a different question, but it needs to be acknowledged. And we can't operate off of abstract principles in the case of the skeptics or liberalists or whatever they want to call themselves. Um, and we can't have, frankly speaking, boring conversations about Trump and, quote unquote, uh, controversial discussions about marijuana legalization, which Sam Harris apparently regards as controversial, um, being the mainstay of what pundits and the so-called intelligentsia are, are willing to, to offer the public in terms of uh, uh, fair for thought. That, that simply cannot be a model uh, anymore. So if anyone has any ideas on how we could, or there are scientists listening to this or watching this or what have you, uh, little old unremarkable me, and you want to share some of your thoughts or ideas, or your own limitations, um, uh, feel free. I remember a direct experience uh, talking to my deceased friend, uh, Adam Jensen, about his own research and things that he might have been interested in exploring, but you know, all based on uh, public funding and limitations there. So moving forward, I hope we can, we can do something. We can mix this up a bit and, and actually finally get topics out there without the prohibitive uh, powers that seek to 
stymie, uh, that sort of thing. Everyone, thanks for tuning in, and I will likely check you out in the not-too-distant future, assuming I'm still alive. Bye-bye, and may the gods watch over you. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.